Susan, congratulations on your new book, A Life on Pit Water, and welcome to Booktopia Buzz. Um, I have to say I've uh, just seen this book about five minutes ago for the first time. It will be published in, uh, at the end of October. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It really made me smile and it really just... I just didn't want to sort of give it back and put it on the shelf. But maybe before we get to a life on pit water, it would be interesting for people to know how you came to live in this very special part of the world. Well, I sort of went there on a holiday very, very early and um, fell in love with it, but thought, oh, I could never live here. But then somehow circumstances brought me back and I rented a house there for a while. And then one day, for no reason that I could really figure out, I bought a house. And I thought it was the worst mistake I'd ever made, but it turned out to be the best thing I'd ever done. I was reading about that this morning, in fact, in, uh, in uh, Salvation Creek, uh, your first book, which is uh, a memoir, and uh, I guess it's about love and loss and redemption, I suppose. I don't want to reduce your life to a T-shirt slogan. Oh, that's okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, what is the main message that uh, I guess you were trying to get across in Salvation Creek? I guess it's that the, the, the trick is to survive. It doesn't matter what life hurls at you, you always learn from it as long as you survive it. And that was really what I was trying to do. Actually, you know, that's such a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to write a guide to pit water and it just didn't work out like that. Right, so originally yeah. the, the Salvation Creek was going to be a guide to pit water. It was just going to be a little guide, you know. And then I, I just found I kept writing all this other stuff and then it became quite cathartic. And I always thought it would just end up in my bottom drawer and never, in, you know, never get published or anything. And when somebody said that they were going to publish it, I nearly fainted because I thought, oh my god, I can't, I, you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. Oh my god, I can't say it. And then I thought, oh, what the hell? Well, We've I think that I, I think the wonderful thing about that, and of course, it was, in, it is an enormously popular book, and and thousands and thousands of people have loved the, read the book and loved the book. But I think what's really special about it is that. I think we all feel as if we know you. I mean, that, that you... But Tony, you know what? Yeah. It's because everyone is the same. What people recognise in, in, in these books is, is themselves because we've all... You know, we all have the same hopes, we all have the same dreams and we all have the same lives, really. And I think, yes, they do know me, but what they really find in there is sort of an affirmation that they're... They're just like everybody else. We're all the same. Well, perhaps that, that's it, but you certainly have a, a gift and an art in the way you express it. I, I'm, I'd like to turn to A Life on Pitwater, which is this wonderful, lavish new one. And as I say, I just saw it. I was really struck by the opening pages or the, end, the beginning pages or the end, the end papers. And uh, it just reminded me of a Pitwater version of A Hundred Acre Wood, which I just... It just put a smile on my face immediately. Oh, well, that's what it's meant to do. Good. Well, that worked. Uh, full of the most stunning uh, photography. I didn't get a chance to read it, of course. Um, but I feel like you've really captured the essence of community there in a very special place. But somehow there's something universal in it as well. Well, that's what I wanted to do. I have to say, Anthony Ong, the photographer, was absolutely brilliant. He kept me honest. Every time I wanted to fluff up a bit more, he would keep me honest. And I'll always be grateful to him for that because what he's done is an absolutely accurate photographic account of the way just our little community lives. But it, I think the way we live, even though we're boat access, is the way every community in Australia is. You know, we, we all pull together in times that are tough. Uh, we all look after each other when we need to. and, and I wanted to record it because I wanted in a hundred years people to be able to go back and have a look at it and say, look, not much has changed. Hopefully, that's what they'll say, not much has changed. What I hope is that they don't go back and say, oh my God, look how we spoiled it. Well, I hope they don't too, although you, have, you do have the wonderful advantage of having all that water to get the across. Moat. The, the moat. The moat, as you, you call it. Um, but also, I think your descriptions of the community, it's both the... Uh, the joys and the pleasure of of uh, having people who can reach out to you but who but it's not claustrophobic which oh, yeah. is ironic given the fact that you're all sitting there on the edge of a bay and i think there's enormous tolerance in the community too because i was talking to somebody the other day about something that had happened and 
and it, it wasn't a particularly um, graceful moment. And she just went, oh, Susan, these things sort themselves out. And it's that absolute laissez-faire attitude that t time moves on, people move on, or something changes, and that you don't sweat the little stuff. And it's okay, and it is a community, and we all know what everybody else is doing, although no one would ever discuss it. And so we know the kids who are being a bit naughty, and we know um, you know, somebody who might need a bit of help because something's not, they're not travelling too smoothly, but we're never in the face yes. with anyone. Yes. And it's, it's a very privileged way to live. Have you, has anybody had a chance to see it yet? Yes, we had a few previews, sneak previews on Saturday when we had a big uh, fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your heart's in your yeah, mouth. I was going to say, you must have been very nervous. Well, I was very nervous it about there. doing it yes. because it, you sort of think, well, you know, how, how, how long can you prevail mm -hmm. on the kindness mm -hmm. of your community? And if I didn't have such a strong sense that, that, that this, above all, is the legacy I want to leave, you know, this account of our life mm -hmm. so that other people can read it, as I said, when this time goes past so they can know how it was, um, I, I probably would have resisted doing it but I handed it over probably to about five people at the weekend and couldn't breathe and and and, and? they've been kind and they love it <laughs> and somebody ordered 20 copies immediately and I, I, I thought my hearing had gone I said a big pardon That's and hilarious. it was just and it was just lovely and then Toby who runs the the barge the Laurel May uh, I saw him when I was going into Mona Vale yesterday and, and he he, he had his barge at Cargo Wharf and he came rushing over and he knocked on the window and he said, I just want to tell you I'm so proud to be a part of this new book. Oh. Uh, I mean, I wept. Yes. Why yes. wouldn't you yes. weep? You know, yes. because they're my family. Yes. They're my extended family. We are all family in a way. Um, one thing that really came out for me just when I quickly flipped through it a little while ago was that it's... Look, yes, it's about Pitwater and about this one particular very special community, but there's something very Australian about it at all as well, and also something quite universal. I'd hate people to think, oh, well, I'm just uh, not interested in Pitwater, um, because there's, there's a message in there for all of us, and it's certainly a very beautiful book just to have as well, an object. you are saying all the right things. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm genuinely... Um, Generally but you're right. Excited, it, yeah. it, it is a uni the, the themes in it are universal. Mm -hmm. It's about how you protect your um, your environment. It's about understanding what's precious and what isn't. And in the words, I've tried to um, to explain why things that are so small that people probably think aren't worth worrying about really are the integrity of communities. The little things yes. are what yes. make up the integrity of communities. Yes. So I hope I've managed to get that across. Well, I really look forward to being able to have a really good read of it and a good pour through it. Um, but uh, in the meantime, congratulations and thank you very much again for talking to Booktopia Buzz. Oh, thanks, Tony, and thanks for your kind words. <laughs>